So this is TJ. We're back for part number two of this Xbox. I think I have it fixed. And then I'm gonna put some air quotations around that. I think it's fixed. But, so let's plug this in. It's all back together. Everything is back together. There are no components that are, I don't have any legs lifted. I don't have any shorts in place. Everything is back to how it, it was when I, when I got this console. I didn't switch out any components or anything. So I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna apply power. And if you notice, the console powers up. It powers up just fine. I hope I don't kill, bore y'all to death, but uh, I'm gonna draw a schematic to show you what I think's going on. And then I'll go under the microscope and show you what I did to fix this, if you wanna call it a fix, because I, I don't know exactly what happened, but it works now, so. So, so when I lifted the leg on that MOSFET, when I lifted the gate, it was the gate I lifted. Uh, when I lifted that gate on the MOSFET, I traced it back to the other side of the board and I traced it to two resistors. And those resistors were kind of like this. And then it went to the gate of the MOSFET over here. And so I was getting like four, five volts here and then I was getting like 4.8 volts on the other side of that resistor, which that makes sense, right? That's what a resistor does, it, it, drops, it drops voltage. But then I took my Oh, I just followed traces actually, and that and that wound around to a small chip that had six pins, and the name of that chip was the U7P1, I believe it was, and we'll see under the microscope here in a minute. And that chip had a marking on it called the K6NA7. Well, when I did a Google search for K6NA7, it it brought up nothing. So. I started Googling, well, how do you read the, the numbers and, or the, the alphanumeric characters on a chip? And it took me to a site that had a, a write-up that somebody had done. And, uh, and so it had K6 in that write-up. And I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link to that, to that write-up. But it had K6 in that write-up. And when I, when I looked at the device info, it had, it had some digits, so I copied and pasted those digits, and it turned out that K6 indicated a, an NPN transistor. Uh, so, in that, and if you think about it, so that kind of makes sense, right? There's six pins, so this chip then, I'm assuming, has two, two transistors. Well, I know it has two transistors because of the test that I did, that, and I'll show you under the microscope. Uh, so, so pin, pin, this pin down here was getting like five volts. Um, this pin is ground uh, I think pin 2 was uh, which is this pin right here because the little dots right here right so this is pin 1 pin 2 pin 3 pin 4 pin 5 and pin 6 on that chip pin 2 I think had some voltage pin 3 which was tied to the gate uh, was like 5 volts or whatever so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this pin then should be the collector of that transistor Obviously, pin four is the ground, so I know that that's most likely the emitter of the transistor, because if a transistor is tied to ground, then when that transistor turns on, it's going to lower the voltage on the collector, because right now you have, you have 5.2 volts on this side of the transistor, or on, on, on this side of this resistor right here, which is, this is just your five volt standby voltage coming from the uh, power adapter that's plugged into your wall. And then that voltage is, is stepped down by this voltage divider right here to 4.8 volts. And that's what's felt on the gate, which allows that, allows one point, um, one point something volts to be felt on the, on the output of, of this MOSFET right here. Uh, so my assumption is then that this is the collector, this is the emitter, and since pin 5 and pin 2 feel the exact same voltage, I'm going to, and, and pin 1 is ground, I'm going to go on the assumption that then either 5 or 2 is my base. And it, to me, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's the same voltage on both. So, so with that being said, let's, let's draw a schematic symbol of a transistor, an NPN transistor, and so that we can see this drawn in a different way. So that is the base of my transistor. This is the collector of my transistor. And this is the emitter of my transistor. 
and I know that if, if what I say is true, I know that my emitter is tied to ground. I know that my base has five volts, and I know that um, I have a resistor, and I have a resistor here. That's what that circuit would look like if I drew, instead of using the two transistors in this chip, if I just drew it out as one transistor, because that's what I think was, was going wrong. And I'm pretty sure that pin five is the, the base of my specific transistor that I'm looking at, because when I, when I measured, you know, because the other transistor would be set up the exact same way, and this is pin one, this is pin two, or this was pin six, excuse me. Um, when I measured from pin two to pin one, uh, with my diode checker on the multimeter, you know, with a positive lead here and a negative lead here, I was reading 0.6 volts. And that's normal. That's what I'm supposed to read. When I reversed those leads, I was reading 2 volts. Again, a good indication that this transistor, or at least this PN junction from base to emitter is good. But on this one, when I did it, I was getting 2 volts both ways. So when I did positive and minus, and minus and positive, I was getting 2 volts both ways. So that told me that that transistor was bad. And if we, if we apply this to the entire circuit, I have 5 volts coming into a transistor. That's coming out with my emitter tied to ground. This is essentially acting as a switch. And if I measure 5 volts here, but I'm still measuring 5 volts here, then that tells me that that transistor is not on because if I were measuring, if five volts was here, then that's gonna forward bias that transistor and I'm gonna have maximum current flow from emitter to collector, which is gonna then, current's gonna flow through this resistor over to, and Lord knows I do not know how to draw the schematic symbol of a MOSFET, something like this maybe. And then there's a arrow pointing Anyhow, you, get, you guys get what I'm saying. Then you got drain and you got source, right? And this source, if you, if you actually own it out, I believe this, the source down here was actually tied to the same 5 volts. But anyhow, or maybe a different 5 volts, but, but in any event. Um, so if I have 5 volts here, then this transistor should be on. I should be getting a lower than 5 volts here, which would be felt here, which would cause this MOSFET to conduct and it would produce enough voltage out on the output on the drain to turn on that one chip that controls my 3.3 volt chip. That's I'm just going to call it my 3.3 volt chip. I said, well, this must be bad because I was reading two volts in both directions. That has to be bad. Now keep in mind, again, I'm not an expert. This is just a fellow trying to, trying to figure some things out because he's bored. So what I did was I found a transistor on a PS3 motherboard and it was labeled N4 and when I used that same code guide thing that I found it said that it was an NPN transistor and I said okay well you know what I'm gonna do I am going to solder up some wires to this little teeny transistor and I'm going to essentially replace that transistor with my N4 transistor while that's still in the circuit you know, because that thing's so small I couldn't lift legs on it. And I didn't want to take it off because I don't know what that other transistor is used for. I suspect it's used after the system's on, then it comes into play and it does something because both of them are tied to the MOSFET in some fashion. But anyhow, that is where we will pick it up and I'll, I'll show you under the microscope what I was what I was doing. And then we'll come back for final, final thoughts on this. All right, so you can see here that I... Uh, had already soldered one wire to the base of U7P1 and I tried to solder my ground lead to, to the ground but it was just too close so I ended up giving up on that and soldering it to the uh, ground plane that surrounds the motherboard. I'm applying flux to that resistor so that I can attempt to solder it. and in doing that I tore off a wire off of that little teeny transistor so here I'm just attempting to, to re-solder that wire to the transistor and it takes a cut these are very very small and it takes a couple of 
couple of tries to to get the solder to stick properly and then I would have to ohm between them and make sure I, I wasn't shorting anything out but it looks pretty secure there I give it a little a little shake so here I'm taking my collector wire and I'm uh, attaching it to the top of that resistor and that's essentially how it's connected in the circuit itself so when I finally get it to stick I at that point I believe I went ahead and carefully turned it back over applied power and then I tested it and when I tested it it worked fine that transistor was conducting uh, the gate was cutting on I was getting my 3.3 volts um, so here I'm just clean I, I took everything back off and am cleaning up all of the connections and as you can see uh, it's exactly how it was before I started this process so nothing shorted no legs are lifted no resistors are moved no components were changed at all and when I finished I said you know what let me give it one more try so I plugged it in and to my surprise it powered right up and it's been working ever since so I don't know what I did, I don't know if it was a cold solder joint around U7P1, a cold solder joint around one of those resistors, I'm not sure. But something I did when I connected that external transistor got this thing working like it's supposed to. I, I don't know why, but it is fixed now. So, Alright, so that's what I did. So I think I'm going to finish this video up by having one more discussion about what I think is going on so this maybe can help some somebody else and if I'm wrong about anything please leave a comment to correct me because I truly do want to learn so we have power coming from our power adapter and that is what is that's our 5 volt standby that 5 volt standby is going to be felt at U7P1 which is a transistor which is then going to turn on and go to U3C1 which is a MOSFET which will cut that MOSFET on which will output 5 volts to U3C2 which is our buck converter and the buck converter is what's going to actually produce or at least provide a path for current to flow to actually enable our 3.3 volt standby so what I learned is that obviously it's distributed throughout the entire board uh, you can measure that 3.3 volt standby at the anode of CR3C3 if you do not get it at the anode of CR3C3 then you are not getting your 3.3 volt standby you can measure 3.3 volts in other places but if you're not getting it at the anode of here then you're not getting it um, if it's missing then you need to troubleshoot back this path if it's missing you'll never receive your 5 volts on the drain of U4B4 which is what the indication initially I found. I believe that's actually 5 volts power on. If you, if you power on the console, then you'll get 5 volts there. I could be wrong, but those are just my observations and findings. And again, if I'm wrong about anything, please leave a comment and correct me. So I appreciate you all watching.